love one another, serve one another. In verse 14 of Galatians 5, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. So walking in the Spirit is directly related to loving thy neighbor. And loving thy neighbor also means teaching, preaching, sharing the word of the God, of word, the word of God, the gospel, the good news. And then how can we fulfill this walk in the spirit as we read for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led by the spirit you are not under the law so clearly uh, the the message is here if you are walking in the spirit the fruit of the spirit then you are loving your neighbor as yourself if you're loving your neighbor as yourself then you are fulfilling the law and the first of those is loving the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your mind and with all of your soul so if you're loving the Lord with your whole heart and Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Then you're going to bring all of that together when you love your neighbor as yourself. And then when you're doing that, because you are following the law of God, then you're not under any laws of man. If you're fulfilling all the law of God, then you are doing everything perfectly in the sight of God. We talked about being perfect. This is how we are perfect. And then he also further in Galatians 5, starting with verse 19, if you are wanting to some clarity about what is it that the flesh wants, then he says these things are manifest in the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now remember, we talked about the idea that there are those who are walking with Christ, they're putting on Christ, walking in the Spirit, and If you're walking in the Spirit, you're likely not to be doing those things that are listed. However, the notion, we all know that we sin, uh, but as we are walking in the Spirit, if we are walking in the Spirit, then we are sinning less. In other words, we don't have a life of sin. It is not our habit to sin. It's not our habit to practice idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. It's not our habit to envy, to murder, adultery. That's not our habit. We're walking in Christ. So our habit is to do that which is good 
What are those things that are good? How is it that we walk in the spirit? How is it that we demonstrate that walk in the spirit? Because the fruit of the spirit in verse 22 is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. If you are walking in the Spirit, if you are practicing the commands of Jesus, if you are loving the Lord with your whole heart, if you are loving your neighbor and you're demonstrating love, joy, peace, long-suffering, in other words, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, then there's no law. There's no law that, that, that can go against you. There's no law that can go against you. If you're practicing love, practicing joy, practicing peace, practicing gentleness, practicing patience, practicing goodness, practicing faith, there's no law on the planet. No law of man that can go against you. Because in verse 24, it further says, and they that are Christ, if you're of Christ, you have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, or even envying one another. So if we're going to say that we love Yeshua, we want to love Yeshua, he says, if you love me, obey my commandments. We have reviewed these past couple of episodes and Jesus' commandments throughout Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and in the other Gospels. We have covered the full scope of the laws and the commandments that Jesus taught. We further narrow down that it his commandments that he emphasized as the greatest commandments includes and does not do away with but embodies all that God has taught us, including all of the original Ten Commandments. And he says, if you love him, you will obey his commandments. And he took it even further by giving us more examples. And how can we love our neighbor as ourselves? How can you love your neighbor as yourself if you're not willing to instruct them in the way that you know will bring them life? and not death. How can you say that you love your children if you don't want to correct them? How can you say you love your spouse if you don't want to correct them? Of course you want to do it in love, in patience, in temperance, in peace. But we should by no means hide what is correct. what is correct. Galatians um, four. So if you go back, um, go back a chapter to Galatians four. And verse 16. Um, in fact, let's just start at Galatians 4 and verse 5. Now, this is a new one. I did not I did not give this in the list on um, Friday night, but I'm, I'm adding it uh, today. Um, Galatians 4 verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law, 
that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did serve unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how, through infirmity of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Wherein, then, blessed ye speak of, for I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I, therefore, become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. In other words, he's saying, listen, you know, all, all before, all before when you didn't know, when you didn't know the ways of the Lord, you served all those other things. Now you know the way of the Lord. I'm bringing to you the information. I'm sharing it with you. Have I, you, 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 you loved me, you received me before, you didn't reject me, you didn't re despise me before as an angel of God. But now when I'm telling you the truth, in verse 16, have I now become your enemy? And it's interesting, I think, that, um, you know, in Romans, when we first read, it said, don't please man. Don't please man. So, if we are doing and following all of the judgments and commands of Jesus, if we're walking in the Spirit, and we're not looking to man for judgment, we're not looking to man for, um, for acceptance, we're not even worried about the laws of man but we are doing all that God has set before us to do then there's no law on the earth that can that, that will hold us into bondage we're free because we're following the word of the Lord we're following all that he's commanded we're walking in love we're loving the Lord our God with all of our heart with all of our mind and we're loving our neighbors as ourselves and when we say that we love Jesus we follow his commands blessed be the word of the Lord may the Lord bless you and keep you and may he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace until next week be blessed <music>